Greetings, I bring you a message from Ledbetter Christian Church. Of course, we're not in the church, as you can see. We're in the great outdoors. This is, uh, we're on location at my sister's house. Um, we often gather here for holidays and special events. It's a very, um, kind of like a sanctuary for us. It's kind of a place that we all, as family, can get away. Whenever my brothers and sisters and nieces and nephew all to get together, this is where we gather. This is the place, and it's a beautiful place. It's her house sits on uh, seven acres out here in the country, and she has two ponds. One sits down a uh, hill, but this one is about 30, 35 yards off the house, off the back door. So when you come out in the morning, this is what you see. Uh, and many mornings, it's uh, covered with about 40 geese, and you can see the reflection. I don't know if you can see that now, but you can see a reflection of the trees, and it's like a sheet of ice or, or a mirror. Let's just say a mirror. Um, and wouldn't we all want our lives to be like that? Nice and calm and still. Unfortunately, sometimes they're not. I'd like to share a passage with you from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. The, uh, I picked that passage because the world we're living in today uh, is a little chaotic, to say the least. We've been uh, straddled with this pandemic for nine, going on ten months. Uh, a lot of us have been in quarantine. We've been uh, stayed inside the whole time. The rest of us are walking around with masks and face shields, hopefully. And, and it's, a, it's a stressful time. It's a stressful time to be cooped up. It's a stressful time to be encountering other people simply because <laughs> you, nobody wants to be sick, right? And the events of last week at the Capitol have left us all a little, I don't know, uh, uneasy might be the best word. It's a little chaotic uh, and for different reasons for different folks. But um, it's a time for a lot of people are, are fearing uh, that, that the worst is yet to come. And I prayfully hope that that's not the case. Um, but I thought this scripture fit perfectly because it reminds us that we're not to be anxious. That we're not a people who should live in fear, but a people who should live by faith. And our faith in our God, our faith in Jesus Christ, gives us hope and gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, I mentioned this, this pond here, this pond that is so calm. And we wish our lives would be like that. But sometimes that doesn't happen, does it? Sometimes our life is like when somebody picks up a big boulder and we throw it into the middle of this uh, pond. At that point, the pond would not be calm anymore. Waves would start rushing towards the shore, right? We call them ripples, but if you put a big enough uh, boulder in there, it would be more like a wave. And so that's what happens to our lives sometimes, right? That we get things that come into our lives and they cause us, a lot of us anyway, to be fearful. You know, we have things that, like financial burdens, right? A lot of people have been out of work for a while and they're suffering from some financial difficulties. Uh, health, you know, maybe you got a bad call from the doctor who says, you know, things aren't going the way you wanted them to or, or that, you know, you're gonna need to come in and, and start some, some uh, chemotherapy or, or something of that nature. Maybe the, your health news or your health issues are not what you want them to be. Maybe you're, you're strapped physically. You can't get around like you used to. All these things are just kind of like things that the world throws at us, right? They put these obstacles in our place. And, you know, they can cause us to live a life of fear or self-pity, I guess, sometimes. Or we can live a life of faith. I don't know what you're struggling with today, but a lot of times it just seems like we're in the storms of life, doesn't it? Like this pond is very calm, but there are days that I've been here when the wind starts to blow and the way and, and the water starts to ripple and then the way the water starts to come down, I mean really beating down, and it disrupts this whole calmness. Is life treating you like that? Do you feel like you're in the midst of a storm? You know, I think we all get there. We're either coming into a storm or we're between the storm or, or going into, into one, but we're always something around the storm. It's some position around the storm. It's either pre-storm, storm, post-storm. Post -storm. 
It's one of the three. And so if you're out of the storm now, watch out. There's one coming, right? The uh, Unfortunately, that's the way kind of the life works. You know, Jesus told us we're going to have troubles in this life. And so we shouldn't, as Christians, be surprised that troubles do occur. But how we handle them, how we handle them is what's important. Do we, are we a people of fear? Or are we a people of faith? Are we prepared for the storms when they come? Have we, have we done the work to where we are ready to meet those storms head on? There's a story that was circula circulating on the internet uh, a few years back, and it was about a farmer who was in the, uh, in the, on the Atlantic uh, coast, but, but he uh, had a hard time uh, finding someone to work for him because there were so many storms that rolled in, uh, and there was a lot of work to be done on the farm. And he tried and he tried to hire somebody, and finally one day, a small, thin man came up and replied for the job and he said, well, you know, are you a, are you a good farmhand? And he said, I can sleep when the wind blows. He said, okay, I guess I'll hire you. And he hired him and the man, you know, would work every day from dusk, I mean, from dawn till dusk, every day putting in his hours. And then it came one night, the, the man was sitting, uh, laying in his bed and he heard the wind blowing. And he knew that meant a storm was coming. So he rushed out of bed and lit his lantern and he ran to the, to the uh, man and said, you got to get up. You got to wake up. The storm's coming. We got to get the farm ready for, the, for this storm. And the man turned over and he, and he looked at him. He said, I told you, I can sleep when the wind blows. And he turned over and went back to sleep. The man was furious. The man was furious. He wanted to fire him on the spot, but he didn't. He didn't have time. So he ran out to cover the... Uh, Rolls of hay and they had already been covered. He went to get the cows in the barn and they were already there. He went to get the chickens in the coop and they were already there. Not only that, the barn door was already barred. Everything had been done. And so he went back to bed and went to sleep. But as he was going to sleep, he finally knew what it meant when the man said, I can sleep when the wind blows. I wonder if we could say the same thing. I wonder if, if we're prepared for the storm. I wonder if when the storms of life come that, that we're spiritually and mentally and physically prepared to meet them head on. You know, a lot of us are, are feel like, you know, maybe we're in a storm right now. But I want to tell you a little secret. You're not the only ones who've ever been in a storm. You know, the disciples, remember, they were in a storm. They were in a storm. Jesus had been talking to the crowds and he said, let's go to the other side. And he was tired and worn out. And he, he went to the front of the boat and he, he went to sleep. And, and as they went across the, uh, the Sea of Galilee, a storm out of nowhere came up. And the waves were large and they were, they were going over the boat and they were starting to fill the boat with water. And they were scared. And I was scared because you have to take into consideration some of these were fishermen. They've been out on the water many times, and so it must have been a really bad storm for them to be scared. And so they went and they woke up Jesus, and he asked them why they were afraid. I wonder if he would have that same question for us. Why are you afraid in these chaotic times? I'm with you. And he calmed the storm. He calmed the storm. He'll calm your storm too if you give him the opportunity. You know, we need to keep our eyes on Christ. We need to keep our focus on our God, don't we? And quit looking around at all that's going on around you. Not that you need to ignore it, but have the faith to know that God's still in control. Politicians aren't in control. Social media is not in control. God's in control. And He's got you. He's watching over you. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't it feel good to know that your God is with you all the time? You know, I want to close with a story of a, of a boy who was playing on the deck of a ship and a, and a storm, again a storm, blew in and started rocking the boat. And people were scared and they started running, trying to get to their cabins and trying to, trying to get out of, uh, seek shelter. And someone yelled at the boy, come on, get in, the, get in, you can't stay out here and play. But the little boy paid them no attention. He just stayed there and played. And finally came up, someone came up to him and said, don't you understand? This storm is here and it's going to get worse. You need to come inside. And the, he said, aren't you afraid? And he said, no, I'm not afraid. He said, I know there's a storm coming. I can see the storm, but I'm not afraid because my dad's the captain. 
He's the one steering this ship. I wonder how many of us can say that. There's a storm coming, but we're not afraid because our Father is steering this ship. You know, the question you need to answer yourself is what kind of life are you going to live? Are you going to live one in fear or are you going to live one in faith? It's a pretty easy question. Either one can steer your boat, but you have to choose what direction you want it to steer in. You want to spend the life being afraid? You know, Daniel could have been afraid in the lion's den. Moses could have been afraid with, with the Egyptians bearing down on him at the Red Sea. But God showed up in both of those, didn't he? He showed up in both of those and provided what they needed. Provided what they needed. He split the Red Sea. He kept the lion's jaw shut. He provided what they needed, even though it didn't make sense. So here's my question to you. When the storm comes, who's going to be the captain of your ship? Will it be fear or will it be faith? And all God's people said, amen. That was that decent? That was the best.